This video is about explaining the processes behind the tic-tac-toe game through the circuit. Let's first start off with the input logic. In the tic-tac-toe game, the players take turns alternately. For the user to select the space where he will make his move, he must push down the button beside the LED. Let's try it out. Now we can see that the LED lights up blue for player 1, and it lights up red for player 2. How does it happen? There are three D flip-flops per button. The one for the enter, another for player 1, and another for player 2. Its first pass will start from the button and the enter D flip-flop. Once the button connected to the D flip-flop is clicked, its value will change into 1. Let's try that. For switch 4, the related button is D. Once we click that, it will pass a value to the enter D flip-flop, which will then enable the value of player 1. The player 1 D flip-flop and the player 2 D flip-flop can never have the value of 1 at the same time in the same section. As we can see in switch 4, it outputs a true value that passes to the player turn logic. We can observe that this part mostly consists of XOR gates. The gist behind this is that if the number of moves is even, it is player 1's move. But if the number of moves is odd, it is player 2's move. The NOT gates output connects to all player 1D flip-flops which enables the D or data input. As we can see, it is only player 1's D flip-flop enabled in every area. Let's try it out. As we click a button, we can now see that it is player 2 smooth. We can see that the D for player 2 is the only one enabled in every area. While player 1's D flip-flop is disabled, this means that whatever button you press, it will only light up the red LED, or player 2's color. As we make our move for player 2, player 1's D input is now enabled, and player 2's D input is disabled. Since we're already talking about D flip-flops, let me also explain how the values reset. It's simple. There is one button, this specific button, that is connected to every asynchronous reset input of every D flip-flop, which is located here. As the button is clicked, it resets all values of all connected D flip-flops to zero. Let's move on to the winning logic part. Note that the structure for player 1 and player 2 are the same. We can see that there are 8 combinations possible for a player to be victorious. These are the horizontal, vertical, and diagonal combinations by the same player to output a value of 1. The combinations are ABC, DEF, GHI, ADG, B E H C F I C E G and A E I. If one of these combinations are satisfied by a player, they will be the victor for the match. To prevent multiple winners, the output of the winning logic is passed to the one winner only part. Basically, the purpose of these D flip flops is to prevent the opposing LED to light up, so that the first victor's LED will be the only LED lighting up. Let's try it out. We can see that the blue is the victor of the match. As we try to make red a victor too, it won't happen. See? Its value remains zero as the first victor's value remains as 1. Lastly, let's talk about what would happen if it was a draw. Moving to the draw game part. To conclude that the game is a draw, 
we must first determine whether there are no moves left possible to be made in the game. This means that all buttons have been pressed. Therefore, we use AND gates to all button inputs and an XOR gate for the output of the D flip-flops in the one winner only part. In the XOR part, it would output a truth value and will be negated by an OR gate which then will make the LED for draw game to not light up. As all buttons are pressed, and there is still no victor of the match. The last end gate will receive both truth values, which will then make the LED for the draw game to light up. Let's try it out. As we can see that the LED for draw game lit up. And as all the buttons are pressed, the AND gate outputs a truth value and the XOR with the NOT outputs a truth value which will then make the LED for draw game to light up. That is all.